Any tool can break, cars break down, technology stops working, even our bodies can break. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? If things didn't break, then how would we learn how to fix them again? Every break is data in the learning process, so while it seems like a bad thing, there may also be good in it. When I was 19 years old, I was a passenger in a car accident, and my car seat was so twisted, they didn't know which part of the car I hit, the dashboard or the door. And a lot of learning occurred before doctors knew how to fix me. What the doctors first thought was a broken nose turned out to be a smashed left orbit and sinus. Now, if you've experienced broken bones, you know they have to be put back in place before they heal incorrectly. In my case, they had to cut from ear to ear, pushing out the shattered bone, applying metal plates to hold the bone in place, and then stapling me shut again. Then as luck would have it, I developed a heart aneurysm four years later totally unrelated to the car accident and no apparent reason why I developed the aneurysm, but I was given six months to live if it wasn't fixed. So suddenly I was being cut open again, having an open heart surgery to replace my ascending aorta and aortic valve. The outcome was some serious medical rehabilitation and recovery from the time I was 19 to 25 years old. But I didn't die, twice. I didn't lose my eye, I don't have brain damage and I didn't blow up my heart. I have metal plates in my head and an artificial heart valve, but I'm alive and well. And I'm still hiking mountains, zip lining into tree houses, skydiving and bungee jumping in excess like I'm proving I'm invincible. My story begs the questions, how do we know how a bone is broken so that we can fix it? How do we know that we need to put it back in place before it heals? How do we know which materials to use when we're creating an artificial valve? How do we know? Medical research. It saved my life. Medical research and analysis of many patients over many years, many tests and lots of data. For instance, the valve they used to replace my aortic valve had only been used for 20 years before they put it in my body. And there was no guarantee that it would last past that 20 years for me. Now it's been clicking inside my chest for over 23 years, so I have become part of the data set that will save lives in the future. Medical research is based on data and analysis, finding patterns and recommending treatments. Artificial intelligence, or AI, is also fed by data to identify patterns, and in both cases, we are the data source. AI can be described as the ability of a computer program or machine to learn, to be smart, it is predicated on machine learning algorithms to identify patterns and make recommendations. The question on many minds, is AI good or bad? It's a tricky question, but aren't we all somewhat addicted to AI? It seems to affect how we live, the way we work, and how we interact with each other. It's the reason we watch what we do on Netflix. It's the reason we listen to what we listen to on Spotify. It influences driving routes we take, the things we buy, the news we listen to, the people we believe. But we're also human. We are also decision makers with autonomy. How AI is being developed and how it is being used is influenced by the data we provide. It's how we behave and interact with the technology every single day. And as with any potential addiction, it's a question of finding our limits. If the way AI is going to be used is in the hands of those who control the data, and we are the data source, then the question becomes, will the data we generate reflect our good behavior or our bad behavior? I've always been fascinated with human motivation and consequent behavior. I mean, why are we motivated to do things that we know are bad for us? And why are we not motivated to do things that we know are good for us? As technology and AI have become prevalent, I also question our motivations and behaviors related to AI. Don't we need to understand how it works and how it's implemented in our daily lives so that we can determine what we accept, for example, the convenience, what we don't accept, maybe the lack of privacy, and what can be beneficial, perhaps potential advancements in healthcare? While addictions can be unhealthy, in this case, is there a possibility that addiction to AI may yet prove useful? I recently bought an Apple Watch, partly because I like checking my ECG, and having my emergency information on my wrist. The old medic alert bracelet's not so pretty. However, the real benefit has been, it kicks me in the butt to get off my butt, to do things that I know are good for me. That's because it transcends pure technology by addressing the issue of human motivation. 
what we need to change behavior, becomes an accountability partner. I work at a computer every single day, often seated, and my watch reminds me to stand up every hour. It's not because I don't know that I need to stand up and move or breathe, but it recognizes that I may need a prompt to remind me because I'm so focused on what I'm doing that I don't remember to get up. Now I see it as motivation to grab another cup of coffee. But more interestingly, it also notifies me when my friends have completed exercise, after which I feel the requisite amount of guilt that I haven't left the house yet that day. But by creating accountability partners in my friends, it encourages me to level up, primarily so my friends don't see evidence of my inactivity. So AI can be a foundation to trigger desired healthy behavior, or AI can perpetuate poor and healthy behavior. For instance, over the past year, my friends and I can see evidence of our resistance to looking after our health. On average, we have had more free time on our hands without commutes, rare opportunities to socialize. And the question is, what did we do with this additional time? Have we been working out more? We know even going out for a walk is a good idea and it's easy to execute. But you know what's even easier? Ordering in delivery and watching another season of our favorite show on Netflix. Their recommendation algorithm is so effective that most of us are motivated to watch only recommended viewing on Netflix. How much? Approximately 80%. 80% of the shows watched on Netflix are recommended to us by Netflix. And those recommendations are based on our behavioral data. Now, I'm a huge fan of sci-fi, apocalyptic, matrix, terminator type movies. You know, the movies that perpetuate the idea that artificial intelligence will take over the world, scorch the earth, and we as humans are likely to be exterminated. So think about the irony of that for a moment. The Netflix AI is recommending movies to me about how AI will take over the world. So if AI is based on our behavior, is it good or bad? Whether it is my Apple Watch, Netflix, TikTok, or Alexa, technology develops where we give attention to it. We as the users demand what we need by using the products that work for us. Because technologies primarily develop out of convenience and they are constantly collecting data. So love it or hate it, if we have a mobile phone, we're part of how AI is developing. I mean, we could try to get off the grid, but even then a drone will probably find us eventually. If we agree that we are already addicted to AI, we must also acknowledge that we are the decision makers. We can choose to sit on the couch watching Walking Dead for the third time, or we can choose to set reminders on our watch and get motivated to get up and go for a walk instead. Nowadays, AI can target and influence behavior based on how we interact with the platform. Now, if AI is too customized and personalized, on social media for instance, we don't get a wealth of diversity in our video, music, or news feeds. But what if the same data is the foundation of further development in healthcare? What if extreme customization and personalization could help us live? In 2018, I was moderating for Siemens Health and Ears at the RSNA in Chicago. It was where I was first introduced to the concept of the digital twin. If you're not familiar with the digital twin, basically it's a collection of digital data of a tangible entity. In healthcare, this means our bodies. It can be used for analysis independently of its real world counterpart. In other words, the digital twin could be kind of like a test dummy for our bodies in the future. After my two surgeries, I've had a lot of checkups and a lot of doctors and trying to explain the different surgeries and their impacts on my overall health while amusing to see the look on my new doctor's face, has been a nightmare. Even my medication has different names in different countries. Now, if I would have a digital twin, any of my doctors or surgeons around the world would get a complete picture of me and my health immediately. Just last year in 2020, a study in the European Health Journal was titled The Digital Twin to Enable the Vision of Precision Cardiology. It conveyed how researchers from King's College in London believe linking computers and statistical models to health data improves clinical decisions. AI can run more data for complex coexisting conditions, do it with fewer errors, and provide analysis at an exponential rate. In an ideal world, it could support and augment our doctors and our healthcare so that our doctors have more time for the human factor to relay empathy, listen to the patient, explain a treatment plan. 
Medical research uses data to recommend treatments. AI algorithms are recommendation machines. Netflix data recommends movies. It's a diagnostic machine with access to millions of viewers around the world. It knows what we watch, how long we watch it, which images we respond to, which genres we like and which we don't, how we react and respond to triggers. Health data recommends treatments. Imagine that same diagnostic machine with access to millions of patients across the world in every dimension, color, gender, race. It could determine when we are getting sick, the treatments that could be applied and the potential outcomes. As with anything, there can be multiple purposes for technological advancement. We've seen in the past how AI can help us achieve medical breakthroughs. In 2009, a movie preference prediction application was developed for Netflix to recommend movies to us. It was developed using previous rating data and no other information about users. Optica, the Optical Society's journal for high impact research, repurposed that same Netflix driven algorithm for tumor detection and tissue analysis to enable better biological imaging at record fast speeds in tens of seconds rather than minutes. So what may start as convenience ends up with far reaching applications outside of its initial purpose. We don't know yet if AI is a good or bad thing. Even the Terminator went from bad to good in the Terminator movies. We do know, however, that things are getting better and algorithms built for enhanced movie recommendations can change the world of health. Medical data and research saved my life. If medical technology can use AI algorithms, adapt them to better diagnose and treat disease, and those same AI algorithms are fed by our behavioral data, developed by the way we use platforms every single day, then maybe lying on the couch and watching Netflix isn't so evil after all. But in the end, we get to choose.